Okay, we'll go ahead and start start the meeting. Um, Bob, put your mic. Can you hear me better now? <laughs> um, roll call, please. Here. Here. Um, we'll, we'll go ahead and run the meeting, and if Jim shows up, um, he'll, he'll take, take over. Public comments. Um, do we have any, any requests for public comments? Or anyone in the, in, in the audience wanting to do public comments? If not, we'll go ahead uh, to the December Code Enforcement Report. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Uh, Ed Roberts will be giving this report. Uh, good morning, Vice President Newton and uh, members of the Sanitary District Board. Uh, Ed Roberts, your District Code Enforcement Officer. I'll be providing the December 2019 Code Enforcement Officer Report. Uh, for the month of December 2019, I uh, conducted a series of four uh, proactive scavenging investigations. In the packet, you'll find uh, maps of the location with a brief summary of each and every contact that took place. Uh, no items of note during December. Um, just uh, one on Hickory, which is kind of unusual for me. Uh, most of the time I concentrate in those alleyways, and uh, I had one over on Joanne Street, which was a uh, indigent individual that had some uh, mental issues, and, uh, but it was an uneventful contact. Uh, any questions regarding the scavenging? It was it any, was it any new occurring, is it a new occurring person that you contacted? Yes, sir. Yeah, the, uh, the, the folks on, on Pepper Tree Lane, there's a couple uh, residents that maintain, uh, for lack of a term, uh, kind of like a temporary lodging for folks in their garage um, right at the curb. Uh, there's one person that uses the garage as a de facto clubhouse. Folks come in and out of the place, kind of use that as a base of operations. That, in, in essence, is a gravitant to the area for a lot of the transient folks. Um, but... Uh, no, no real like regular offenders that I've seen. Right. I always ask the same question, right. especially for Pepper Tree. Pepper Tree, yes, sir. Um, and uh, moving moving forward, uh, for the month of December, uh, total of eighty three uh, storage of cards in public view were addressed by myself. Uh, just for the benefit of the board of directors, uh, I'm sensitive to the fact that the holiday season, uh, December, we. I try to handle everything as softly and as, ensure voluntary compliance to the best of my ability and uh, take a softer approach with folks during the holiday season just for, uh, you know, just perception. Uh, I noticed a lot of that, sir, on, on some of the residential streets. Um, the other thing, too, is you just got an influx of wrapping paper and just overabundance of, of material, cardboard boxes, all the, all the stuff that comes with the Christmas season. Um, I just noticed our trash volume probably went through the roof during that, during that month. And uh, I think folks were probably filling their trash carts out and probably trying to do a second run, um, refilling them out again and seeing if they could get curbside pickup. But uh, no, nothing unusual. All right. and, and just for the benefit of the Board of Directors, at, at the tail end of my report, um, I address graffiti. Uh, there, there's limited instances of graffiti popping up. Uh, most of them are, are self-inflicted folks just taking a spray paint can, writing their address numerals on the actual can itself. I don't think it rises to the level where it needs to be addressed. Uh, if there are any egregious instances, uh, I'll telephone it into CRNR and request a car replacement as soon as we can, just so we don't have that proliferation of graffiti in the community. And um, at the back end of my report, you'll see uh, at a glance map of the locales during that month. And uh, it seems like a fairly even distribution. You've got two on the north end and two on the south end. That concludes my report. Uh, I had a quick, just a real quick question. Some of the uh, multifamily units for, that have individual carts, you know, the one to fours, some of them have enclosures, like the one behind my office. Those landlords all are required. I think that's a city requirement that they have to be in closed. Do you ever, or do we keep an eye on the graffiti that might be on those things? Uh, I, I see it, sir. Um, 
a long time ago, j just for your benefit, I, I was actually involved in that when I worked code enforcement on the city of Costa Mesa side. Uh, there was a push to encourage uh, the multifamily property <coughs> corridor to enclose yeah, yeah. And, and, and let those uh, wood structures kind of minimize the um, And on the other side of the coin, my you know I, I'm aware that graffiti uh, anywhere that there's a, a large open wall or or a, a canvas per se, it's going to be a target for graffiti in the area. Pepper Tree Lane doesn't have, in my opinion, what I perceive to be a significant graffiti problem. Uh, I, I don't see a, a real issue in that community, uh, that portion of the community. I would say more on the Shalimar end of town, uh, you know, south end of town. That's where the graffiti Joanne, all that stuff. That's where I do see graffiti affixed to trash dumpsters, enclosures. But that just goes with the makeup of, of the area. You know, there, there's. The city does a pretty good job of cleaning. I mean, I, our graffiti task force, or whatever they call it, they do an admirable job of getting out there quick and cleaning it up. I, I would say I so, think. sir. I mean, I'm, I'm actually kind of impressed with the way the city of Costa Mesa and how they conduct the graffiti abatement. Um, Gaetano used to be out there. I know Greg Gaetano since retired. Yeah, Gaetano, yeah. Um, but there, there are, are many, many staff members who are out there early morning uh, pressure washing or, or covering up the graffiti. So. Uh, anything else? Any other questions for Officer Roberts? Thank you, sir. Uh, next item is the hotspot cleaning program. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Vice President. So in, in 2011, we the district had 97 hotspot locations. And a hotspot is a, a sewer line segment that requires high frequency cleaning twice, two times, three times, sometimes four times a year due to uh, root infestation, uh, uh, fats, uh, oil, grease, uh, structural defects. Um, if we don't clean them more than once, then there's a risk of having a, a sewer spill. So in 2011, there was an internal committee created that consisted of myself, our wastewater maintenance superintendent, our cleaning crew, district engineer, and uh, EEC Environmental, who manages our, our fats, oil, grease program. We would meet every three months, and we would strategize how to reduce these hot spots. The, thinking, the theory was if we can reduce the amount of hours spent on the hot spots, we can shift those hours to our annual cleaning. And as you know, we have a, a, a strategic goal <coughs> to reduce our hot spots to less than 30. So I'm pleased to inform you that we are now down to 18 hot spots. Uh, we believe by the end of next fiscal year, we can get that down to 14 because we have two hotspots that are located uh, uh, that are that are um, part of uh, ductile iron, um, and we're going to do a ductile iron replacement project. And also, there's a couple of uh, projects that, after uh, a couple of uh, cleaning cycles, we're not pulling in a lot of grease or grit, so we could probably put that back on the annual cleaning as well. So we're, we believe at the um, end of the 2020-21 fiscal year. We will have 14 locations, and these will be our permanent locations. They'll be considered permanent. And the reason why we're considered permanent because these 14 locations have severe structural defects that it's just more cost effective to clean them than to repair them. So we will currently have 14, and um, by having those 14 um, hotspots, it saves uh, us 72 hours and 45 minutes of labor a year of cleaning, and those, those, those hours are now shifted to the uh, annual cleaning. Uh, as a result of having the 14 permanent locations, I made decisions to disband this internal committee, and we only meet if we need to, if necessary. So um, basically, the, the, the objective was achieved, and I'm pleased to report that uh, um, uh, this committee is disbanding, and we've achieved our objective. So happy to answer any questions. The structural defects, are they siphons? No, they're, they're, se they're severe um, um, bellies or... or, or um, um, Zags. Zags, thank you. Zags, yes. And the two ductile iron replacement projects, are they in the works, or do they still need engineering? I, I don't know. For sure. I'll know more later this afternoon. Um, uh, but I might understand there were other designs. Yeah. Uh, uh, PVC, uh, plastic. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, most likely be slip slip lined. Yes. They're they're they're, they're ductile iron because they're in um, um, a problem where you know wheel loads might have affected it. And sure. Is the plastic pipe strong enough to? Uh, uh, that's a good question. I'll, I'll have to confer that with the engineers. I think, yeah. I think historically we've just reamed them out, and it, and maybe I think one of the alternatives is ream them out and line them. But yeah, I, I believe they're, 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 they're rusted, and so that's why we have to either remove and replace or we um, uh, line them. Out a way so, to, yeah. yeah, we either line them or figure out a way to yes. replace them. But yes, correct. I'm not sure plastic is strong enough. But do, you, do you know those two, two locations that they're at? No, I don't. They're mainly, they mainly go across the, the, like Harbor Boulevard. And they're not deep enough to withstand the structural loads from the road. I'm just curious if we're going to have to close the lane or something when we do it. Well, that, you got the choice we had to make, but historically we haven't. And yeah, yeah I, it's kind of ahead of the ball game here. We just, we, we're, you know, uh, we, we have some time to get that done. So um, uh, by next fiscal year, we'll, we'll, we'll get it prepared. Steve, Steve, how do we, if they're a hot spot, do, how do we clean them? We will just do the routine cleaning with the warthog. Okay. Yeah. So there, if it needs step cleaning, we'll do that too. Okay. Any other questions by board members? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, very good. It's an excellent job. Um, the December 2019 Organics Tonnage Report. Just have just staff to be able to answer any questions you may have. When will we have the numbers on tree Christmas trees? That will that be on next month's report? Yes, February report. Yes. Last part. Are Christmas trees still being collected. I, I don't remember the dates. That's all. They're still on the street. They're still on the street. Some, a few places. Um. So Paris from CRNR. Um. The. We were collecting from 26th to the 10th, but if somebody calls into customer service, um, then I think we will still collect it. Okay. But I'm talking about like active collection um, was going on between 26th and January 10th. Okay. But yeah, I, and I've, I've encountered some customers and I've just told them to call in and um, request customer service. Now that we have a fake tree, I don't bother with it. <laughs> well, I, I had seen, I, I'd seen the uh, normal container pickup thing. I think they were putting them on that and Putting them in the um, in that in that collection truck thing. So is is that recyclable truck? That standard practice now. You used to go around and pick them up with the front front loaders. So um, so you saw them pick it up in in a uh, in a uh, like a si uh, yeah. side side loader. Oh, I see. Okay. I I guess operations may have changed. I thought that they were doing it from the front loader. They are doing it on the front loader. We saw them. I think this. I think what you're talking about is some operator went rogue and picked up a tree. Well, I, I believe that's what happened. I, is there any issue with that? Uh, I imagine if it can fit, like, size-wise, then the yeah. sidearm should be able to pick it up and dump it in there. Uh, and maybe that's what he was thinking. Uh, we also had the front load, loader come by our area. I had one of my neighbors say, do you see how they collect Christmas trees? They were amazed that the guy was on the front and, you know, hey. They got it done. So, any other questions? <clears throat> um, the 2019 solid waste diversion report. Again, Mr. Vice President and Board, where staff is available to answer any questions you may have. Um, th th this is a very good chart. What, what I was talking to CRNR PARS before the meeting was, I'd like to see a schematic of. Um, the green waste organics and finds the things with the, that we asterisked down at the bottom there. So it's, I'd like to know that the organic cart goes to CRNR, you know, and what they they do something with it, and you know, some of it goes to the landfill and some of it goes to the digester, and also the green some of the green waste is separated out of the mixed waste carts, and some of that goes one place and some of it goes another, and that that that's going to change. But you know, I, I'd like to see a schematic of that, um, of how we deal with those kinds of things. In the in sometime in the future. Any other questions on those reports? 
Uh, and, and you know, I look back in 2006 and 15 and 14, and it's amazing how these waste characterization <laughs> um, charts have changed. <laughs> I'm sure, Jim, you're <laughs> well aware <laughs> of that. And, and you know, it, it, it's because uh, the materials, you know, there's, there's less newspaper created and there's less whatever, but it's also what happens to end up getting dumped on the ground and, and sorted out. Okay, the next item is, uh, if there's no more questions, is the schedule. We need, we need to work on scheduling uh, when we'll be developing the strategic plan. Yes, Mr. Vice President. So, <clears throat> excuse me. It's um, that time of year. Uh, we have reached the fifth, fifth year. We're in our fifth year of our 2015-2020 um, uh, strategic plan. Uh, so staff is uh, recommending uh, we begin uh, developing our 2025 strategic plan. Uh, and to do that, uh, to start off, we, we're suggesting to board schedule a, a workshop type meeting so we can review again um, our vision, our mission statement, core values, uh, what are our, our goals. I mean, we have different goals. You know, what are we trying to achieve in the next five years? Um, so uh, if you can look on your calendar and pick a date, preferably in April, May. Um, and then before that, I would like, I'll have some, sub, some meetings with staff to um, uh, engage with staff on what they believe um, our goals should be. And I'll share that with the board. Also, uh, I will invite the, the Citizens Advisory Committee members to attend your board meeting as well so they can be involved in this process. So if you can give us some dates that, that work best for you, um, that will be helpful when we get the ball, ball rolling. What months? April or May. Okay. Well, let's start off with one. And we'll see what, how far we get. If we need to schedule another, we, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, is there any way we can get our uh, the, uh, strategic plan from before so that we have some idea, like, the, how we planned our goals, what, what our goals were? Sure. Well, as you might recall, every quarter I give you an update on, on your strategic plan. So um, every three months on your staff and your board, in fact, I'll, you'll have your next one in, on January 27th. So uh, every three months we, I give you an update. Here's the status of the goals. Have they been achieved? Oh, well. Yes. Okay. We've been doing that for almost 10 years now. On the website, too. I, mean. I think, yes. Yeah, I, yes. Think it's on, it, it, I think it's pretty prominent on the website. Probably should probably ask Mike and Arlene what dates fit them better because they're usually the ones that are out of town. So April? Well, April or May. But, um, you know, April's a better month for me. May, I've got, we've got some plans. and I know the Solid Waste Conference in New Orleans is the first week in May. April is just better. So the Angels aren't playing April. <laughs> they play in the evening, so that's not an issue. Mr. Vice President. Yeah, the first. Well, that's right. They, the, the baseball season. Or is, normally they play in the evening. First week I'm in Sacramento, but and you said the second week is not well, good. I could probably be available, but I'd snow. But I don't, it, it's yeah. probably okay the second week. Well, I, I think I. We need to obviously check with whoever else is, you know, yeah. the CAC and their schedule and all that other stuff. But um, you're tending. We're going to tend to do these in the morning, I would assume. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what, what your particip participation yeah. from the CAC is going to be, depending on their work. Well, I think this is a board project, yeah. and CAC yeah. can they, sit in if they can make it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I would suggest... Uh, uh, what about the week of the 13th, somewhere in there? That's Easter. Let's see. No, the 6th is... The 6th is, the, the the is Easter that. week for schools. schools. Yeah. Day is Easter. It's well, Easter it's the twelfth. So that's that probably wouldn't be good. Huh? I, yeah, I'm, I can adapt. Uh, we have a study session on the fourteenth. Um, tax days on the fifteenth. How about Thursday the sixteenth? Fine. 
nine ten, tentatively nine thirty. Nine thirty. Wednesday the twenty second. How about Wednesday the twenty second? Why don't you come up with two or three days? The twenty second, I I've got a ten o'clock, but the sixteenth is wide open. Do you have a problem with the sixteenth? Also, we might ask the manager when he's going to be around, being he's internationally known. Nope. He said the 16th he's available. Oh, okay. I'm here. <laughs> huh? That's Thursday. It's a Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. It's hard for me to, as I sit here right now without my work calendar in front oh, of you'll, me. So. Well, is Thursday sometimes a conflict. Sometimes Thursday's an issue, but I can <laughs> overlook that. Um, I would rather go back to my office and have a couple of options to get back to you on. If we Thursday is the okay, 16th. What, what's the second option for you, Mike? 20 said Wednesday is the best day of the week for me overall. You know, why do I have San Diego the 22nd April? Oh, I have a doctor's appointment that morning, but it's possible to change that. That's not Wednesday. She, what, what she had, that's the SDLF conference, the, tw the week of the 20, oh. the 19th, I believe, right? Do you remember? Yeah. Oh, okay. You're right. Because here, SD, yeah. Okay. Or uh, 29th, do April 29th. That's a Wednesday. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm open that day. Yeah, that, like I said, yeah. typically in my work schedule, Wednesdays are yeah. an open day. So April 29th at 930? 9 o'clock? Sure. Earlier, better for me. Same here. Um, we've pretty much decided then not to have an outside consultant. No. You're going to do no, it. I'll facilitate it, yes. I think it yeah. saves the district money. Yeah, it's good. To have someone say that, to have someone come in and tell us exactly what Scott would tell us anyway. Redundant. <laughs> Especially if Scott, he and Scott meet. <laughs> okay. So, so do we want to choose one of those dates? April 29th, or I think April 29th at 9 o'clock. 10 o'clock? 9. 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. What date did you say? April 29th. How long do you visualize it? Hours, maybe. Half a day? Two hours, a couple hours. 9, nine o'clock? Okay, um, the next item is uh, mitigating roaches in the sewer system. Yes, thank you, Mr. Vice President. This item was requested uh, by the board to be discussed today. Uh, I've been briefing the board about um, a recent issue on California Street. We have a, a resident, or actually a property owner, who's renting a home on California Street, and, and this, this property owner is, is telling us that his, this house is, is infested with roaches and that the, the tenant is no longer paying rent or suing them because it's so, infest, so infested. Um, I've, we've had several conversations uh, with this gentleman, and uh, we did CCTV the, the main line in his lateral. We did find, find light to medium, root, uh, light to medium um, roaches. Um, we typically uh, spray this area, this, this, this California Street neighborhood, that whole neighborhood area. Um, uh, every two years, we use uh, uh, a company called Golden Bell. They have a, a patent uh, pesticide that no other company can, can use, uh, and it's approved by the state of California. That proves to be effective uh, uh, with roaches. So we were about six months behind, um, but we did end up spraying that neighborhood um, in the middle of December. So the whole neighborhood was sprayed, so that's good for two years. Um, I did include in, in your staff report uh, some suggestions on how to prevent uh, roaches from entering your homes, and quite simply, it's it's very simple. You just gotta um, block any kind of crevices, cracks, holes in your home. That's where they come up on. I, I remember I had a, I had roaches in my house, and the pest control has said, "Well, that's coming out of your drain in, in the laundry room. You just gotta cover that up." Once I did, they went away. <laughs> you know, it, it was pretty simple. So um, I don't know why this person is is trying to blame us for it. Um, but uh, he was supposed to be here today. He said he was. That's why I invited District Council Alan Burns here. If you have any questions, um, uh, what liabilities we may have, 
Um, but that is our, our um, approach. We currently spend about $20,000 on, on roach uh, infestation, which um, sprays about um, a quarter uh, of the um, district. So if you want to do half the district every, every year, so you'll, you'll, you'll have the whole district every two years, it's going to more than double. If you want to do that, then just direct staff to come back, and we'll come to the board and ask for an appropriation. But that's going to be over $45,000 a year. So it's more than double if you want to do half of the district. So that's something to consider. Um, but uh, myself, um, uh, Steve Cano, uh, and uh, just Council Councilor Burns, we're here to answer any questions you may have. Have we ever, ever had any other complaints about this same topic? We, we get, um, yes, we do get complaints every once in a while. Um, um, I don't know how many, uh, but we do get them every once in a while. And um, getting to my staff report, um, if we recently sprayed, and uh, we open the manhole, and there's more than we see more than 50 roaches. And Golden Bell will come in and clean and respray it at no cost. Sometimes we see less than 50 roaches, and then we got to use our own pesticide, which is not quite as effective as Insecta, uh, but that's what we do. Uh, but we do occasionally do get calls. I, you know, I live on California Street, obviously. Um, this, this house. Well, first of all, I have a pump station on my property. We do not have a roach problem in our house. Uh, I, I can't tell you the last time I saw a cockroach on my property, whether from the pump station or my lateral. Maybe I'm doing a good job of abating them. This house that this person is, is complaining about, the manhole is two houses to the north of this house. So they're not directly, you know, the roaches are apparently coming out of or going through and coming up just his lateral. Because I've talked to several neighbors and, and people in our neighborhood. Nobody has talked about a roach problem. So I personally don't think this is our issue. I think this is a maintenance issue at the house itself. This house is kind of unique in our neighborhood because the whole front yard there's no grass. It's all pavers. And, there, and, and I, I've driven, I drive by there every day. I don't remember seeing, you've been to the property, right, Steve? There's no clean out out in front, is there? No. Um, to me, that's the easiest way for them to solve that problem is to get a clean out and regularly maintain it. Um, I don't think this roach issue is our problem, based on my limited knowledge, but uh, also my experience in that neighborhood. I I just don't see, I don't see it. Yeah, I'm not in that neighborhood, but. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm in the College Park area. They're going around with this uh, uh, listing, and this is a private company, to turn around and try to get you to, you know, go with it. I am with a private company um, right now. Pest I've control. always been. Pest control. It's not pest control. It's, it's um, termite. You know, it's for yeah termite, and it's a yearly thing. You, I just sign for the year, and they qualify me so that you know they come around and look and do their little holes that they have to do and so forth. And we don't have any trouble in the college park area because everybody takes care of their own problems. They either spray it or take care of it some way. And I feel like Director Schaefer that, you know, uh, I don't see us, you know, having to really jump on this because I would rather see more than one person, you know, complaining. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in total agreement. Um, if, if there was a, an opening that roaches could crawl through, uh, they, that house would uh, have a sewer smell. Mm -hmm. I don't think they reported that. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I, I, I would not make any changes in, in our present policy for roach control um, based on one, you know, one potential. I don't think we have any, 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 uh, any, any part of this problem. You know, not, not being a roach expert. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, Steve, when you CC'd the, the TV, the lateral, what did you see? 
we did televisor lateral, and there was some, I would say, light roaches throughout the whole lateral. But you know, they hide in the house laterals too, so they have access to the houses. But it was very minimal. So the way they have access to the houses is if if they let one of the pea traps dry up or whatever, and then they would see them in their bathtub or in their sink or where. I just think the nature. Oh, I'm sorry, Aaron. but I think the nature of the of this house and the yard covered with pavers. I think that I know if I have something in my yard, a a, a rock or a solid surface, and you go to pick it up, there's generally bugs underneath those things. Yeah. They go there because the moisture gets trapped. Yeah. I, I personally think that this owner, by paving that whole fr the whole front yard, is encouraging these bugs to stay in because it's a more moist environment than if it was just open grass. I, mm -hmm. Am I wrong in that? Possibility. I mean, yeah. it, it, I just don't understand that. I don't think this is our problem. And even if they're in, in the yard, why would they go in the house? I mean... Unless they had bait. The unless house. they have go the eat. door open. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Art? Just one question for Alan. Do you see any liability on our behalf? No. Uh, I don't see any liability. Like as everyone said, it's not really our issue. Sewer uh, roaches do live in sewers. It's kind of a you know they like warm, dark places, and that's a natural habitat for them. I'm I'm kind of surprised Golden Bell would give a two year warranty. I'm wondering what the warranty would be because I'd be surprised if a roach didn't come back within two years. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, do we, Steve? Do we do? do we? Fifty. Yes. Yeah, even so, I mean. We do roach control for staff. When we do get calls from HQ, um, I'll send my guys out, and we use a uh, it's called Demon WP by Insecta, I believe. It, no, Demon WP, but it's a um, less potent spray. It's just go out. We just go out there just to spray for the contact. Um, well, my question was, why do we do roach control at all? Is it is it for Staff who have to enter the manholes, or no, they don't have to enter the manholes. When Golden Bell comes out, they just pop the manhole and put in a, um, it's like a spray applicator, or it coats yeah. the walls. And if we didn't do it, um, the infestations would start up again. Um, there's only certain parts of the city where the heavy roaches, like areas with the apartments, you know, high dwelling areas. Yeah. And, and it's probably grease related. Yes. Or flat lines. You know, they love yeah. flat or lines. Commercial area, restaurant areas are going to have roaches because they. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess a, kind of to follow up with Art's question to Alan, we're doing our due diligence with, as a district policy, we're doing our due diligence, aren't we, to mitigate the roaches? Do you, I think we are. I think uh, Art had a good question. I'm not sure what the uh, why we do spray at all. Uh, it's just if it's effective, that's great. But I, I'm kind of surprised we do spray, and whether it's for staff or I mean whether that actually helps or not. I, I guess somebody's done a study about it, and this company has suggested that it does um, do something for you, or else they wouldn't be in business. But uh, Yeah, it was before I it's before I've been here. Yeah, it's been it's been implemented for a while. Counts the roaches to make sure there's fifty. <laughs> um, it has any um, has, has any has any has staff contact, um, contacted vector control? No, we have not. I, th I think that'd be interesting to see. I my suspicion is they're probably. Um, studies and things done, and vector control would we be have on the top. council for vector control. I know, I know. Get some insight. Well, I, I thought I thought maybe Alan had heard. The, <laughs> yeah, I not only uh, I 
I not only know about vector control, but I have personal experience with asking those same questions. So <laughs> I, can, I can assure you they'll be very helpful in giving you information. They won't treat it for you. But yeah. um, I've gone through this personally myself at the office, and it was, uh, the issue was it was a seal on the toilet. I mean, it was yeah. that simple. Oh, yeah. And uh, it was just totally night and day it fixed it. And, uh, yeah, but somebody said, mentioned that there'd be a sewer spill once in a while. And there was once in a while. We were thinking, why do we have that? And it was just that seal, a little silicon, problem solved. We spent tons of money trying to fix it with chemicals and sprays and everything. Nothing worked. I mean, they, they were dead. Yeah. Find them dead, but uh, they'd reoccur. They showing up on the, on the carpet. Dead carcasses kind of are sometimes ugly. worse than the live seal. ones. Pardon? It was the stuff like you'd uh, uh, cock a uh, shower with, you just uh, siliconed around the toilet face and fixed everything. Yeah, the, I was wondering why they did that. Including the smell. Yeah, then you would notice the smell if there's a sewer connection that's open in the house. I wouldn't suggest that to the guy. <laughs> okay, I, I, do you have direction no, I don't. on that? No, thank you. Uh, okay. Oral, oral communications and director's comments? I, I have one, if I, if I might, Mr. Vice President. Talked to Scott a little bit yesterday afternoon, and I've talked to you about this as well. Um, I would like an agenda item for uh, our next board meeting to name a facility in memory of Rob Hamers. Oh, that's mine. Whether it be a pump station. I, yeah. You had talked yesterday about maybe even naming the, the yard after Rob. Um, I don't have a pride. I, I think as important as the guy was to this yeah. district for yeah. so long that, you know, a lot of agencies now, and maybe some agencies actually have policies on naming things, but um, whether we have a policy or not, I, I'd really like to see us put Rob's name on something to memorialize his contributions. I, I, I think we should check to see if we have a policy. Yeah, yeah, Bob, I'm, I'm sorry. I know at Orange County Sand District, we did not have a policy, but the board did name one particular facility. I know the city of Costa person. Mesa has a policy on it. So. Most lot, lot of cities will have it. I, I, based on um, Director Schaefer's um, direction, I took the initiative and started already writing a staff report and getting some estimates of what it would cost to replace or revise a couple of signs. We have two signs at the yard, so I'm getting those, <clears throat> those costs. Also, I, I did relay it to his daughters that were considering doing that. They were very excited. In fact, uh, they're going to be back in Southern California uh, in May, and um, that might be a good opportunity to do like a proclamation and maybe a little ceremony um, with that with, with their families here. Um, the thing is, I just got off an email with them before this meeting. They're going to be here on May 20th and May 21st. Our board meeting is May 24th, so something to consider when we when I bring this item to you um, for your consideration on January 27th. Do you want to reschedule your board meeting when they're here? You know, I, don't, I don't think we need to reschedule the board meeting. I think we just have a ceremony regardless. I mean, let's don't, for the sake of the public, let's don't change the board meeting. Let's just do a separate presentation or something at the site wherever we're going to do it. Okay. Unless you want to do like a reception or something. And I mean, That's, we can do that anyway. We can do that anyway. We'll board meeting at the same time. Yeah. I, it, it, again, changing board meetings sometimes gets sensitive with people. And sure. Sure, but I'll, um, so I'll, I'll have that staff report for you on, the, on your January 27th meeting. I would suggest not renaming a pump station because they used to have numbers, and then they got names, and, and, and if you go out and look at the panels, you know, <coughs> then all the plans have to be changed. You know, uh, there's a lot of background from those particular facilities' names. And they're not uniform now, although they all have, you know, they all, they all have a modern name and then they had an old name. And if we give them a new name, you know, it, it won't, it, it'll be harder to keep track of. So yeah. Something like a, a building, though. Yeah, when we meet on the 27th, we can determine that location. Mm -hmm. yes. That way the public can know that we're talking about. Well, no, I mean, I, I would like it decided the sooner the better. That's what I'm talking about. The 21st. I'm talking about our no, you, you decide on the 27th, and then, um, then if you give us a green light, we'll, we'll start making the signs. At our board sorry, meeting. I had the wrong date. Yeah, the yeah, board yeah, meeting's the board on the 20th. I'm sorry. On the board meeting, we can discuss 
yeah. that we, the public may have some concerns too. Yeah, I, absolutely. I just think it's an appropriate way to honor right. honor Rob. You know, he was pretty proud of that uh, yard building because of the green LED, L-E-E-D. The whole thing, yeah. And so maybe not, well, yeah, it's either the building or the facility or, or, or something. Anyway, staff can come up with some recommendations. Well, I think we all have some ideas already, you know, and we, but we need to discuss it at the board meeting. Well, I, did you say we don't have a policy? I don't know. I'll, I'll have to check it. I'll, I'll, revise, I'll look. I'll put it in the staff report. Any other director's comments or communications? If not, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Is Jim okay? Do we know?